Well, hey guys, playing around with output stages again. This time I'm making a output booster stage for an LM386. So why would I do this? Well, again, it's just for fun. Just want to see if I can make it work or not. Well, I did make a video on the LM386 chip itself. And just like the data sheet shows, the thing is somewhat current starved. If you look here with a 4 ohm load, the output power, you can see going from 6 to 9, then up to 12, the output power does not change. Maybe just a tiny little bit. But normally when you increase the output power, or I should say the supply voltage, you should see a huge increase. I mean, if from going from 6 volts to 12 volts, we should see about four times the output power. But, you know, we're seeing nothing here. No change, pretty much. And even with an 8 ohm load, well, you can see it. You can see the huge increase going from 6 to 9 volts. But when you go from 9 to 12, it's not that much. It's starting to starts to flatten out again because like I say it's current starved and when I measured it at 8 ohm loads 9 volts in my test uh, before clipping I was getting oh I think it was uh, about uh, 600 milliwatts or so and if you put a 4 ohm load on it and that would now that was at 9 volts and uh, if you put a 4 ohm load at 9 volts it really didn't change much very slightly so if you want to get a little bit more power out of it I was thinking building an output stage keep it real simple like this you know a couple transistors complementary pair of transistors and you know it's a single supply so we have an output coupling capacitor and just use a couple biasing diodes and we got the base emitter diode here so we have that and then the one down here for the PNP and we'll determine what resistors we'll use here in the biasing circuit and of course we'll just feed the output of the LM386 right in here. Here is the circuit. Ignore these other chip amps. We're concerned with this one here, the LM386. And it is connected to the output stage. Being the LM386 has enough output current to drive a loudspeaker. I'm hoping I have enough current here in this output stage to drive the transistors. So after fumbling around I'm using 470 ohm in the upper and lower biasing resistors. And that seems to work pretty good. However I was not quite able to get the uh, output swing all the way symmetrical from top to bottom. As you can see here I'm only getting about 2.55 volts before clipping and that resistor is the 8 ohm load the output is connected to and by the way the blue line is the LM386 output which will be a little bit higher it has to be because the output stage has no voltage gain and since it's driving a light load, the LM386 is, the output stage, of course, is driving in the heavier 8 ohm load. So, you know, it's not going to be as much as the LM386 output. So we're clipping around uh, 2.45 we'll volts. And I can't find my vacuum fluorescent 
Radio Shack calculator. So I have to use this Casio branded as a Radio Shack calculator. And uh, what did I say? 2.45 squared divided by 8. <laughs> That's pretty much the same output that the LM. 386 itself can make into an 8 ohm load, so this is not doing too good. We're just clipping too early on the bottom. So what I did is add what's known as a bootstrap circuit. Well, what a bootstrap circuit does is kind of a clever way of making a constant current source without having active components and it's been used quite for some time in uh, mainly in uh, audio amplifier ICs this is a LM390 yes saw a lot many years ago in the 70s and 80s with a lot of uh, audio output ICs so what they do is they bring you know this is part of you know, this, think of this as the upper transistor of the output stage. I'm not showing the whole stage. And they're taking that one biasing resistor and making them two resistors. So what happens, well, first they connect the, a capacitor from the output to the center point of those two resistors. So what happens as the voltage on the base here is swinging upwards, so is the output and the outputs upward swing plus the swing on this or I should say the voltage on this capacitor raises this voltage higher and it keeps the current in this resistor here constant and it gives you a little bit more output swing and that's exactly what I did here I actually did it on the lower transistor because that's where I needed most of the help. So I, I didn't have the exact value, so I just used a couple 220 ohm resistors and put the capacitor from the output to the center of those two resistors. And much better output swing. Now watch as I remove that capacitor. See how it drops? Plug it in, get better output swing. So now we're swinging just before clipping. I'm gonna turn it down a bit. About 3.15 volts. Okay. Annoying glare on the calculator. Wire in the way. Okay, 3.15. Square that. Divide that by the 8 ohm load impedance. Much better, 1.24 watts of output. So yeah, we're doing a lot better than the LM386 alone. You know, it was 0.7, and this is getting, at, uh, you know, 1.24 watts. However, I wanted to get this thing working good with 4 ohm loads. Well, it starts clipping again. The 4 ohm load is just uh, dragging it down. So if we back that off to before clipping 2.14 2.14 squared divided by 4. See our uh, Output power actually dropped. We're just not getting enough current to drive those transistors for a 4 ohm load. And there is another problem with this whole circuit. Well, because I'm using such low value resistors for the biasing, you know, there's a lot of current. So this thing is biased quite a bit up into. Uh, and closer into class A. You know, we're running at uh, probably 150 milliamps of bias. 
and a high powered amp you know that may not be crazy but for a smaller low voltage amp that might run on batteries and that's just too much and I'm actually surprised that this thing has not thermally run yet on me you can see the those diodes there they're not really touching the transistor so you know, they're not thermally tracking properly they are pretty close but you know this you know, it's been running here for several minutes and it hasn't gone thermal on me well because of that high bias I really can't do anything more I'd really have to use driver transistors or find some uh, Darlington's output so you know since they're self-contained I won't have to have extra parts that might be a way to attack it but as this circuit stands I consider it a failure because it didn't meet my expectations though at 8 ohms 12 volts yeah I did get a little bit of power just can't use 4 ohm loads well thanks again for watching and that's it